Welcome to Handheld Gaming Reviews. Today we're having a look at this masterpiece of budget technology, the game console R36S, better known as the R36S. There are a bunch of companies out there that put their own brand in front of it, like these on Amazon. Bit of a PSA for you all here. If you have access to AliExpress in your region, go there. Amazon has this thing listed at up to twice the price. How does this thing look and feel? Well, first of all, that little power status light does a fantastic job of shining right in your eyes if you're playing lying down. It's a lot worse when it's blue than when it's red. Bit of a weird feature to include, but there you have it. If this were my main device, I'd probably put a sticker over it. Button feel is a little stiff on the D-pad for my liking. ABXY buttons feel a little on the cheaper side. On the whole, they're okay. Some people might even prefer them. They just don't seem to have the same quality as the Ambonic range, but at half the cost of Ambonic's new 4-inch vertical, you'd expect there to be some compromises. So while they do have a cheaper feel, on the whole, they aren't terrible. Look, for 50 bones, or around 35 USD, they are more than fine. In fact, you can't really complain for the price. The sticks feel a lot like something you get on a Nintendo Switch. Actually, not bad, and you get two. There's also a function button, start and select buttons, two micro SD slots, one for the OS and one you can use for games, two USB ports, one for charging and one for plugging things into, like a Wi-Fi dongle, more on that later. To my surprise, USB headphones work through it, although the volume control didn't appear to do anything with these plugged in. You'll also get a 3.5mm headphone jack, a power button for turning it on and off, a reset button, volume rockers, and a centerfire speaker for your ear holes. On the subject of the speaker, it's actually not too bad. I mean, it's nothing to get excited about, but it does the job for a cheap handheld. Go with some headphones for the 3.5mm audio jack for a better experience. You'll also get these shoulder buttons. They do the job, but it would have been nicer if they were offset a bit. The battery life on this thing is okay. I mean, you'll get a few hours out of it, no issue, and if you stick to 16-bit titles, I'm sure you'd hit the 3-4 to four hours easily. The battery definitely depletes faster than the ambient range in my experience. The screen quality is pretty good, does the job for the games this thing can play and the 4x3 aspect ratio is great for systems up to and including PS1. While we're talking about all things screen related, on the plus side the R36S came with a screen protector. On the downside, remember when screen protectors were plastic, bubbled like crazy and looked like the plastic wrap your mum used to put around the sandwiches you had as a kid? Yeah, well, it came with one of those, which lasted about 3 seconds on the device before I took it off. For the 50 bones that this thing cost me, I'm just going to take the risk of going unprotected, raising. Looking at the games list on the stock firmware, I've noticed some games that are included don't load. I'm not sure if this is an issue with the ROMs or another issue. Particularly that game where you play as a pipe technician in business with your brother and your girlfriend keeps getting kidnapped by zoo animals. Yep, that game library has some issues. On the positive side, box art is already scraped, and this thing comes with heaps of games for the consoles it can actually play. Out of the box, you can expect to play 16-bit titles and some PS1 titles. N64, uh, I don't know if I just tried the wrong games, but I wouldn't recommend this thing for N64, at least not out of the box. I feel like some of the issues could be addressed by using custom firmware or tinkering with the core settings. If you play N64 games regularly on the R36S, leave a comment below with your experience. On that note, I did download a more recent version of ArcOS that has been maintained by the community. Wow, what a difference. Difference. The biggest improvement I noticed was in PS1 titles now running a lot smoother, to the point where I would say the system is now capable of playing up to PS1, and the some games caveat then applies more to N64 or Dreamcast. You'll really have to tinker to get N64 to work for you, I haven't messed around too much trying to get those cores to download, which might help. In my opinion, if you manage your expectations of this device to PS1 are older, provided you are happy to go through the process of downloading and installing a more recent version of ArcOS as maintained by the community, it's not a bad deal for 50 bones. Finding the download link to the newer version of ArcOS wasn't too difficult. I just googled R36S custom firmware and found a page on a site called RetroHandheldGuides.com that had a bunch of suggestions. Now, that website is packed with a level of ads that suggest your PC will be having unprotected relations going anywhere near it. So, do so at your own risk. That's also why I did want to outright provide a link that I used as I don't want to be held responsible for anything that happens next. Features? Look, I don't know, this thing apparently supports Wi-Fi, but because I didn't read the description properly when I bought it, I booted it up, saw the Wi-Fi enable option, I spent far longer than I care to admit trying to figure out why the Wi-Fi wasn't working. Yep, turns out you need to plug in a Wi-Fi dongle into that OTG port. Pretty sure this thing also doesn't have Bluetooth, but I'm happy to be proven wrong in the comments below if there's some setting right in front of me that I haven't found. So, who's this thing for? I'd say it's for someone who doesn't want to spend a lot of money but wants to give the retro handheld hobby a crack. If PS1 games are older at your jam, or if you're more focused on 16-bit or older titles, the R36S might be all you need. Again, if all you want to play is 16-bit games on a budget, yeah, I think I'd recommend this, but I'd strongly recommend getting the most recent version of ArcOS available to you to get the best experience out of the device. On the whole though, I'll tell you what, if you can stretch your budget to any of the Ambinic range, particularly the RG40XXV, 
For the extra money, you'll get something that looks and feels a lot better, nudges into the N64 and Dreamcast library and supports Wi-Fi and Bluetooth with a bunch of custom firmware on the way that opens the door to quality of life features like SingThing. I've got a few more handhelds to review that cost about the same or even a little cheaper than the R36S, so if that's something you might be interested in, give that subscribe button a go. In fact, as a sneak peek, I'm going to review this thing next. Spoiler, I didn't think something with such a small size would have such a large impact. Yep, that's another phrasing violation. In what I'll call the mid-tier, I've also got an RG40XXH to review, and for the more premium side of things, I have an Ambernic RG406V on the way, as well as a Retroid RP5 on pre-order. If you stayed to the end, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my video. Since going down the retro path, I've had such a good response with almost 30 subs in the last month. I'm still working my way to victory to hit that 1,000 sub mark, so thank you to all of you for being a part of that journey. On oh, one last thing, at some stage between now and Christmas, I'm planning to put together a video on some good options for stocking stuffers or work secret Santas, if you will. For example, if there's someone in your life that you want to appear to be generous to, but you want to stick it to them for whatever reason, say they used all caps in an email or drank that last Coke Zero in the fridge just as you had a craving, give them the R36S. Sure, it works okay out of the box, but it's a pain in the ass to get it to reach its full potential. Or maybe you can give it to your significant other, you know, to let them know it's a perfect representation of your love for them. While it makes you happy when you first get it, with some work and determination, you can turn an ugly duckling into an average swan. And on that note, Thanks again for watching, I'll catch you in the next one.